Apple currently sells three different Apple Watches that each target a different price point. But what are the differences and did they actually make any meaningful improvements over the previous year? Apple offers a comparison chart, but there's so much information there. What information actually matters and what if I want to compare more than just three watches? In this video, I'm going to show you a custom chart that I created that will visually show you the differences between the watches. I will then explain what the main differences are between the watches to save you the time from doing the analysis yourself. Then I'll walk you through a little buyer's guide to help you choose which watch is best for you. Let's jump in. Okay, for starters, if you would prefer to skim through a text post, I have duplicated this video on my website, mapopovich.com. And on my website is where you will find a link to the comparison table. Speaking of the comparison table, I don't want to waste your time, so here is my comparison table. I have created it mainly by duplicating all the information from Apple's comparison page. A few rows I had to go elsewhere to get the information, but if you go to the full detail tab, I tried to add comments whenever some information wasn't super obvious. And I guess, speaking of the full detail tab, that's where I include all the information I can find. I then grabbed the important rows of information and put them into the concise view, which should be sufficient for 95% of prospective buyers. To show you how I use this chart, I'll just walk you through the differences between each watch. Let's start with the Apple Watch Series 5. The main thing to note is this watch will not be getting any more software updates. It is stuck on watchOS 10, so I would not recommend buying this watch right now. The next best watch would be the SE2. This watch is currently getting software updates as of 2025, and it is currently running watchOS 26. The location of the SE watches on this chart is kind of just my opinion. They don't have a perfect spot where they fit, so I just tried to find the column where it fit best, which can sometimes be confusing because they are not always only upgrades over the previous watch. So, for example, the SE2 does not have an always-on screen, it does not have ECG capability, and it does not have an IPX dust rating. But it adds crash detection and a newer processor. So it's sort of a hodgepodge between older watches and newer watches. But going on to the Series 6, this watch adds an always-on screen, ECG, and dust protection back, plus blood oxygen capability. Upgrading from Series 6 to 7 adds a slightly bigger screen and slightly faster charging. The astute observer will also notice that the processor number is different between these watches. However, Apple uses the same CPU in all of these, so even though Apple changes the number, they are basically the same in terms of performance, and I'll talk more about this later. Going to the Series 8, this adds temperature sensing and crash detection. The SE3 does not have ECG or blood oxygen, but it adds a double tap gesture, a faster processor, on-device Siri, and 5G. The Series 9, while it is two years older than the Series 3, I believe is slightly better. It has a slightly bigger screen, same as the 8, plus adds back the ECG and blood oxygen features. The Series 10 adds a slightly bigger and wider angle screen. It adds a water temperature sensor and water depth gauge. Series 11 really only adds 5G and about 30% longer battery life. Okay, on to the Ultras. These all have an additional action button, which is used to quickly start a workout. Looking at the chart, the Ultra 1 is fairly similar to the Series 11. The main thing that the Ultras provide is longer battery life. However, I can't really recommend the Ultra 1 because it has an older processor. So while it is currently receiving the latest software updates, I don't know how much longer that will last. I imagine it will stop receiving software updates in 2026, 2027. So that's just a risk to be aware of whenever you're buying this watch. The Ultra 2 adds a brighter screen and a newer processor over the Ultra 1. 
and the Ultra 3 adds a slightly bigger and wide angle screen as well as a couple hours of more battery life and most notably it also adds satellite connectivity. So that's my comparison chart and that is how I would use it. Please let me know what you think of it in the comments or if there's anything that I'm missing or you would like added. If you find it useful, best way to say thanks is by liking this video, subscribing to the channel, following my socials, and if you're buying a watch on Amazon, if you use the links in the header row, the channel will get a small commission at no additional cost to you. Okay, so now that you know the differences between the watches, let me try to help you choose which one is best for you. The first thing to note is the processor. As I briefly mentioned previously, just because Apple increases the processor number does not mean it is any better. So for example, if you were going to get a Series 11, you could also get a 9, 10, or SE3 and expect the same performance and duration of software updates. So you could use this to your advantage and buy a two-year-old watch that performs about the same as a new one for half the price. The next thing to think about is screen size. If you have a smaller wrist, you might find larger watches uncomfortable and want a smaller watch. All of the watches have both a small and large size, except for the ultras. Those are only available in large. Next is cellular connectivity. This will allow you to get notifications on your watch whenever your phone is not nearby. So for example, you're going on a run without your watch, or maybe you're doing some sort of water sport and you don't want to carry your phone on you. However, this does require a typically $10 monthly fee from your cell provider. But one other perk with a cellular watch is the capability to call 911 in the case of an emergency. You do not need to pay for a cell plan in order to be able to do this, but you do need a watch that has cellular capability. This is why I bought my parents cellular capable watches, even though they're not connected to a cell plan. So in case they fall or are in some sort of accident, they will still be able to call for help. Okay, by this point, you should know roughly what year of watch you wanna buy, what size, and if it has cellular or is Wi-Fi only. The last thing to decide on is features. If you want the best battery, you're going to want to get an Ultra or Series 11. ECG and blood oxygen are available on all newer watches except for the SEs. Sleep apnea detection, crash detection, water temperature, water depth, those are only available on newer models. And lastly, satellite connectivity, that's only available in the Ultra 3. Decide on which features you want and that should guide you on which watch to buy. Well, that's a wrap. I hope this was helpful. Again, please feel free to reach out in the comments if you have any questions or if you'd like to see a similar video for phones, laptops, desktops, let me know of that as well. Thanks for watching. Happy holidays, Merry Christmas, and I hope to see you all again soon.